White Sox and Red Sox, and uh, we picked this one up in the bottom of the third. Orlando Cabrera with two men on, and Cabrera lines a single up the middle. Kevin Euclid is trying to score. And what happens when baseball players turn to football players? Somebody gonna get hurt. And somebody did. Euclid's not only out, but he's injured. It wasn't Sandy Alomar Jr. who was injured on the play. It was Euclid. He is day-to-day -day with a contusion to his right leg. You see him come up limping. Let's jump to the top of the eight. Three, two White Sox, and uh, the bullpen falters for the Sox. Carlos Lee clubbing. Mike Timlin has given up a run in four of his last six outings. So we go to the ninth inning. Here come the Red Sox trying to battle back from a 5-2 deficit. Bases loaded. Jason Baratek delivers two score. Red Sox trail 5-4. And you sense the flavor at Fenway, right? Right. Oh, Lando Cabrera, check yourself before you wreck yourself. He can't. Red Sox strand 11. Oh. And the White Sox go on to win. 5-4, your final. Tigers facing the Angels with Sean Figgins in right field for the Halos. This is Figgins' sixth different position this season. Right field, center field, left field, third base, second base, shortstop, water boy, bat boy. Anyway, top four, Angels lead 2-1. Aaron Seeley facing Brandon Inge. Ends to right. Figgins comes up throwing and gets Craig Monroe at the plate. Angels hold on to their one-run lead. Bottom eight. Two out, score tied. Darren Erstad with the bat in your hands and you pull up your pants and do the rock away. Lean back, T. Angels take a 3-2 lead despite getting out hit 7-6. Top nine, two on, two out, same score. Troy Percival in trouble until Carlos Guillen flies deep to center, but it stays in. Percival, save number 23. Halos get a 3-2 win. All right, Rangers and Devil Rays. Texas trying to grab a share of the wild card lead. Lance Nix, the story here. Bottom of the second, Texas down one nothing. Not no more. Runner on third and one out. Nix lifts a two-run shot. Number 13, he had three RBI on the day. 2-1 Rangers. We jump ahead, top of the fifth. Rangers up 4-2. Ryan Dries was outstanding. He went seven and a third. Seven hits, only two runs. At the bottom of the eighth, Texas leading 4-2. Add two more. Mark Teixeira gets a piece of the loving. He was two for four. His 28th of the season. Rangers up 6-2. Bring out the brooms. Rangers get their ninth sweep of the year as they sweep the Devil Rays out of Arlington. And here is your up to the second wild card leaders. And how about this? A dead heat atop both the National League and American League wild card races. You know, Lehman Time was part fad, part catchphrase. I mean, he's an emotional cat who sings in a band, always smiling. But dude had just won 12 total games the last two seasons combined. Mark Pryor had no nickname, just a reputation as maybe the best young right-handed pitcher in the National League. So why was Lima 10-3 this year headed into Sunday and Pryor 0-2 and seven starts at Wrigley at home this year with an ERA of more than a touchdown with the extra point? Obviously, it's not Pryor time. Or is it? Top one. Prior, Rock Cesar is stirs to sleep. Next batter, Steve Finley. You got play. Nice outing by Pryor. Season I, nine Ks and six and one third innings pitch. Bottom five, two on Cubs, one on, one out for Corey Patterson. Corey, booyah! That's Lima time. Takes Jose Lima out. Two run shot, his 15th of the year. New career high for home runs in a season by Corey. 4 1 Chicago. Eighth inning, 5 4 Cubs, two out. Cesar Estures, looping liner over the head of Mark Drizzelenic, scoring Robin Ventura. We're tied at five, one of 12 Dodger hits. Next batter, Steve Finley. Big ups. Finley, RBI single to right, scoring Alex Cora. Said Finley later, until the game is over, we're not thinking we're going to lose 6 5. And you don't lose with Eric Gagne in the hill. Big Canadian came in throwing heat. Freaks. Jose Maceas with a 96 mile per hour fastball. 142 saves over three years. Ties a major league record for Gagne. Dodgers win at 8-5. So San Francisco and Philly Giants with a chance to move into a tie with Chicago atop the wild card standings. Top of the seventh, Barry Bonds facing Vincente Padilla. Padilla thought that was a strike. It was high. He's not happy with it. Larry Boa comes out for a discussion. Bonds ended up walking. Padilla was stellar, but uh, later A.J. Pruszynski taps him up. A double to right. Bonds thought that Marlon Bird caught it, so Barry tried it. He easily would have been out at third, but instead, Jimmy Rollins throws it home. Bonds goes to third, and you know when those kind of mistakes are made, what happens next? They come back to bite you. You're right, buddy. Same inning, two on for pinch hitter Davey Cruz, and Cruz, the RBI single to right. Giants go up two to one. Michael Tucker, though, gets greedy, thrown out at the plate. That ends the inning, but Giants go on to sweep 
and, and they have now won four straight as uh, Brett Tomko gets the, his sixth win. Padres, Reds, this is crazy. Bottom nine, 7 2 Padres. Sean Casey at the plate. Felipe Lopez at second. D'Angelo Jimenez at first. Pay attention. Casey shot to Sean Burroughs, who cannot make the catch at third, so he picks it up, tags third base. That's for the force out of Lopez, right? Then he throws to Loretta, who tags Lopez, but see, Lopez is already out. Okay, the guy can't be out twice. Now watch him. He's going to tag Lopez again, but Lopez is, he's still out. Loretta doesn't realize there are only two ways to get out Jimenez, who is on first. You got to step on second or tag Jimenez, but watch him. Does he step on second? Oh, no. He steps over second base wow. to talk to umpire John Hirschback. Confused, Loretta throws to first. Now, when he throws to first, watch. There's D'Angelo Jimenez between second and first, and he's not out yet. Ryan Klesko at first, he, he don't know what to do. He's like, what? I don't, I mean, what up? What I'm supposed to do. Knows how nobody stepped on a bag. Nobody yet. stepped in the bag. Finally, Klesko to Loretta, who finally steps on second for the second out. So there are four outs on the play, but only two of them count. It's the old 5 4 3 4 double play if you're scoring at home. And by the way, the Padres win the game 7 to 2. So after all that, it's a three way tie for the NL wild card. The Cubs and Padres 63 and 54, while the Giants check in at 64 and 55 at the end of the weekend. Next up, the Cubs head to Milwaukee. Padres host Atlanta. Giants will square off against the Expos, wherever the Expos play. Oh, no, it's in San Fran, which could be a home game for the Expos. The Tribal Pool, even with Minnesota, and complete a three-game sweep with the Twins. The Twins were 1-11 with runners in scoring position. At the top of the second, Chad Durbin gets Corey Kosky looking. Next batter, Christian Guzman, and uh, that's just unlucky. Oh, marvelous! The 6-4-3, double your pleasure. Minnesota stranded 11 on Sunday. Top of the fourth, base is loaded. That's Corey Kosky in trouble again. Next batter, Guzman, and uh, same flavor. Durbin, five strong innings, just gave up two hits. Guzman can't believe it, and the Twins struggling in Cleveland. But the problem was the bullpen was shady for the Indians. Top of the six, runners on second and third, and Jose Offerman delivers the pinch hit, two out, two run double to tie the game at a deuce. Twins, one for 13 with runners in scoring position Sunday, but it's okay. When it came, it came, and it was a big one. Bottom of the ninth, tied at two, winning run at third, and one. Rincon gets Bellier to fly out to center to end the inning. And, folks, that means extra fun for first place in the Central Division. Top of the tenth, and Corey Kosky finally hits one. And, my friends, the game is over. Good night now. Twins get the two-run homer from Kosky. They also get the 4-2 win, avoid the sweep by Cleveland, and so they hang on by the hair on their chinny-chin. Chin Indians could have ended the weekend in first place, tied with the Twins. Is that a beard? The hair on the chinny-chin? Chair on your chinny-chin. You know what I'm saying. Okay. You know what I'm saying. Anyway, it's a two-game deficit right now. Great series for the Indians, nonetheless, and Omar Vizquel cooking the knees all good for the old but tasty Omar Vizquel. <laughs> the first facing Kevin Brown his second leadoff homer of the season hit his first leadoff homer in the majors versus Brown it's a home alone shot uh, his fifth of the year he also stole two bases and is hitting a crispy 362 top of the six and Gil mesh makes really his only big mistake a home run to Hideki Matsui Matsui two for four but mesh solid seven innings pitch seven hits two earned runs seventh inning two outs bases load Mariners up five three and uh, Miguel Olivo hits a two-run single to right center. Edgar Martinez and one other comes around to score. How about the Mariners raising up, trying to show some pride? Mariners win 7-3. Royals and A's, top four, no score, two out. Aaron Guile at bat facing Barry Zito, and Aaron Guile just gets all mishugana. Mm. Zito struck out nine in the game. That was an ill curveball. Seventh inning, Zito in lead with two on, two outs, one zip Oakland lead. Ricardo Recall now pitching to David DeJesus, and he hits DeJesus with the bases loaded. No pitches, hits him to load the bases. DeJesus also extended his hitting streak to 15 games, a Royal rookie record. Recall to be pulled by Ken Maka. Justin Duke Schurer pitching to Joe Rand to give the people what they want, Joe, but don't give them too much. Three-run double. Royals win the road series for the first time in a month. Zito, he needs a hug. Therapy or something. Royals win the game. So He's picked this one up at the top of the second. Larry Walker at the plate. A little chopper here. Rafael Furcal can't do a thing with it. It was ruled a single. What? Yeah. 
Two run score, cards up 4 1. Two batters later, Scott Rowland, who has just been ridiculous this year, and that's out. A two run shot to center, his 27th home run of the year, 99th and 100th RBI, 6 1 lead, top of the fourth, and uh, Mama, hit that man again. <laughs> Number 28 for Rowland, cards lead 8 to 1. Bottom of the six, and uh, Larry Walker still finding his way in a right field for the Cardinals. Larry, la 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 Larry, dicey, but good. And check this out. Walker really never catches it with his glove, uses his body. That's just a Canadian thinking. Great play by Walker. Jump to the top of the eighth, and you know who's been ridiculous in this series? Who that? Albert Pujols. Fourth home run of the series. 36th of the year, he ties Adam Dunn for the Major League lead. Cardinals are ridiculous, 40 and 19 on the road as they win 10 to 4. Uh, back to Scott Rowland for a quick second. This is how hot he is. Uh, another two homers on Sunday night, and he is now three shy of his career standard, 31. Is also likely to put up career bests in batting average, RBIs, and on base percentage this season, around to another postseason appearance for the Cardinals. MVP may be. I hear you. Diamondbacks, Mets, Randy Johnson, 0 and 1. 1.29 ERA this year against New York. Mike Cameron, lifetime against unit. He ain't never had a hit off him. And has struck out 10 times in 16 at bats. Bottom two, Johnson rocks Cameron silly. Said Mets skipper Art Howe, we caught Randy on the wrong day. Cameron struck out again later, though he would get a hit off unit. Sixth inning, Johnson strikes out Todd Zill, and then Zill felt Johnson stared at him. Didn't like it. Later, Zill said after 4,000 strikeouts, he doesn't need to be doing that. Big unit said later, yo, we were just battling some words here. Somebody said something about halitosis. Somebody's breath was stinking. Cooler heads prevailed. <laughs> Nothing happened. Zill won for four and that K. Later, Johnson, well, he's 6'10". He's going to hit his head in the dugout. Hey, yo, he's been in the league for a Can you build the things a little bit higher? Bottom nine, Johnson tells Joe McEwen, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get the heck up out of here. 14 Ks, ties his season high, 199th career, double-digit strikeout game. D-backs win it. Three, six, number nine, three plays from the sixth position. Jimmy Rollins, ridiculous to get the runner at first. Alex Gonzalez, sick over the shoulder, kind of like Willie Mays. And then Nomar from deep in the hole. That's your nine, three, six. Number eight, Dodgers and Reds, and Adam Dunn goes crush, crush. I mean, actually, this is Jurassic. He smokes it into the Ohio River 501 feet away. Number seven, Falcons and Ravens. Fred Weary, seven interceptions on the regular season side. This is preseason, but he picks it off of Michael Jenkins' hands and goes 49 yards back to the house. Ravens won the game 24 zip. Number six, White Sox and Red Sox, Kevin Euclid, and uh, watch the catch there. Slides in to the dugout. Well, not quite. Holds off and pulls it in. Number five, Rockies Pirates, Tyke Redman, diving on the warning track. Tyke Redman, are you kidding me with that catch? Oh, my goodness, what a play he just made. That was a great so catch. And number four, a great catch from the Jaguars and Dolphins oh, game. Ronald oh, Bellamy one-handed catch. catch. Watch it again. Bellamy stretches out, pulls it in, and uses his left hand to cushion his fall. Those are skills. Like that. Number three, speaking of skills, skills. And or skills. Or skills. <laughs> Andrew Jones to deep right. Brady Clark robs Andrew. Now, Andrew's got six career gold gloves, but Brady does his best Andrew impersonation on Andrew. How about a number two, and uh, this is a, a three-pack. Corey Patterson nails Khalil Green at the plate when he tries to run on him. Then Sean Figgins replacing Vladimir Guerrero. He gets Craig Monroe, and we go minor league for some more Skrills. Skrills. Minor, New Jersey versus Brooklyn, and you don't run on Mr. Conception because he'll get you in, every time. It's Brooklyn, in, it's Brooklyn in the house. Number one, Thanks. coach in Chargers. You like it? <laughs> Aaron Moorhead. This I ain't sick. I ain't but that ain't right. The, That's crazy. The Russian judges gave him a 9.8 for the landing and the dismount. Aaron Moorhead, 80 yards for the touchdown like Peyton Manning needs any more weapons at wideout. Colts won the game 21.